Hi, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Seminera. Today is the Frankfurter or the Hot Dog or the Wiener Show. It's got so many names, mostly established in New York. The American Hot Dog has become an icon to ball games, picnics, and just favorite snacks and eat times of America. Now we're here at the first Nathan's that was built in 1916 in the famous Brooklyn. So Coney Island, New York, where you can get a hot dog, walk the boardwalk. But let's step inside Nathan's and eat and pick some of their favorites that have been on the menu for years. Now, when you come into Nathan's, this is actually their inside, built in 1916, right down the block from Coney Island. Signature dishes are right on the wall. Now, we definitely need to order one original hot dog, sauerkraut, and mustard. Now, when you also come here, don't forget to try the cheese dog. Let's get one cheese dog. And if you're in the mood for cheese, then you definitely need to get the chili dog as well, one chili dog. Now, when you're in Nathan's, you can't forget about getting their crispy cut crinkly fries. Uh, which will also get a side of french fries, small, and taking it to the next level, some bacon cheese fries on a small size as well. My signature dish, even from when I was just a little kid, used to come here and get a corn dog. It's a hot dog, deep fried and some batter on a stick, you can't beat it. Let me get three corn dogs. Three corn dogs. I'm hungry today, so one is definitely not going to fill me up. So we're going to take all this food back over to the patio and taste some wonderful creations of Nathan's. Now the first hot dog right here is one of my favorite, uh, which is sauerkraut and mustard. Now anytime you have a hot dog, best thing that I like is when they take the bun and put it upside down the griddle and it creates that steam and moisture and makes the the bun nice and kind of gooey that's why I, even when I go to like these hot dog trucks I love when they take the hot dog and drip it with water and put it right on the dog because it, it give it makes it moist biting into like uh, a hot dog bun that's too toast toasted way too much or hard this isn't what it's about. Now the sauerkraut definitely helps this by softening the bread up with those delicious juices uh, from vinegar. Now this hot dog was cooked totally on the griddle. Uh, that flat surface, really hot. Uh, however, these would be great on a grill as well. Get those nice grill marks, different flavor. Uh, either way, let's see how this baby tastes. Now. The casing on a hot dog is really important. It has to have that snap. There's a lot of tricks over the years that people have done. They put a little lemon juice uh, in the water, a little bit of vinegar, and it creates that snap. It really makes the, um, the, uh, the casing constrict, and it helps create that snap when you get into it. And I think that that's really important with a hot dog. You really get that snap with natural casing. The next hot dog here is their signature chili dog made with beans, beef, and of course, red sauce and spices. Uh, really good if you have both the chili sauce and the cheese sauce on. However, I'm doing it and keeping it separate this time around. Uh, as again, you can notice that this frankfurter was cooked the same on top of the griddle. Let's bite into this baby. Double beef action is where it's at. The chili was good, not too spicy. Just enough amount of chili powder in there, working out good. Now the next frankfurter has the actual cheese sauce in it. Now again, the, 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 the key to a cheese sauce is that after you get it, you can turn the hot dog upside down and it just doesn't run all over the place. You know, it's good to have it nice and warm and melty, but you don't want to run into a situation where, it, where it's too sloppy, it's too much of a mess. Over here, they got it done right. As you can see, the cheese is thick. It's gonna go perfect with a combination of salty beef. That's a winner. Now, if you don't live in Brooklyn, New York, where you can't get these Coney Island hot dogs, and you need to make a good cheese sauce, it's really simple. Take a cup of heavy cream and about 10 slices of American cheese and five slices of cheddar cheese over a, a, a saucepan on really low heat. Just start stirring that baby, and you'll get that cheese fondue that can go right over the frankfurter. Now, one of the 
most signature, if, especially if you live in New York, you know about the corn dogs. And even growing up uh, in New York, these delicately dipped hot dogs in a special batter that they've created, deep fried, uh, is definitely a treat. Now, if the batter is good, you won't need any mustard, you won't need any ketchup or anything like that. So you could just bite into it the way it is. I noticed that you got a lot of great hot dogs going on here with the great batter. And it's nice and fried. So you got a situation here where it looks really good. The hot dog is really flavorful and the batter is perfect. We're gonna dip that in. Now, as far as the hot dogs now go over here, now you need your French fries, of course, right? French fries that are deep fried, crispy. Now, we have some French fries here that have some cheese sauce and bacon bits and stuff like that, which is really gonna add to it. If you've never had bacon bits and cheese sauce in your French fries, you're doing yourself an injustice. Definitely run over here and get this. Now you got French fries here with bacon and cheese sauce. Definitely a great treat. I'll say this might not be the most healthiest food in the world, but man, it's New York and that's what I'm talking about. Mm. Nice. Excellent combination. You need those bacon bits, you need those cheese sauce. Looking good. Now to finally wash it down, I got myself a classic root beer. Now before we devour this great food and go on to the next segment, out of Brooklyn, New York, and on to the next adventure, taste this. So now our hot dog search brings me right here to Madison Avenue. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, good. So I hear you got the best hot dogs on Madison Avenue. Yeah. So I have to come try it out. So talk to me about what it takes to survive, because there's a lot of hot dog trucks around here, right? Yeah, yeah. What what makes people come back to your stand every 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 day or every other day? I am work uh, after the weather is good, the so sunny. I'm come, I work, but the the weather is rain. I am, I am not work. Now, what makes your hot dog so good? Yes, I cook the hot dog in uh, water. So your secret is, is putting the hot dogs in clean water, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's, there's a lot of people out here that might not do that. But All right, so now, what else is your draw? Now, you have something called the onion crunch dog, right? Yeah, yeah, I have onion. This couple in the hot dog, onion and ketchup, mustard, sauerkraut. All right, so it's a combination of onion, mustard, sauerkraut, uh, and ketchup, ketchup. And ketchup and mustard, yeah. I said that, right? So what do you like about New York City hot dogs? Why do you pick this corner the, the, on the, Madison Avenue? How come you don't go where the other 50 No, I, I am come here because here is customer, it's good, the place is busy, I am come. You got, you got your own little domain here. Because there's yeah, a lot yeah, of these yeah. hot dogs. How many do you think there are in the city? It's too much, like 50 cars in, uh, in, uh, in Fifth Avenue, only the Fifth Avenue. But there's more cars in the city of New York, down, down, uptown. Rice, uh, yeah. hot dog, shish kebab, steak. You may not know this or not, but there's 5,100 hot dog trucks all around the, the city here. Yeah. That makes some stiff competition, right? <laughs> yeah, man. All right, I'm gonna have one of these onion crunch dogs, a signature favorite at this particular hot dog stand. All right, here's the signature onion crunch dog going down. Now we talked about what a crunchy hot dog should taste like. Nice snap with the beef, of course the casing. Soft bun and terrific flavored onions. Let's check this one out. Delicious, my friend. Yeah. Now these onions, is onion, are, yeah. are they a signature family recipe? Yeah. So this is your secret blend. Yeah, I think this, this is pretty good here. I'm gonna recommend this spot. <laughs> okay, man, save the street, man. Yeah, make sure you make a lot. You know, okay. we don't want anybody saying you ran out on us. Thanks a lot for Thank having me here. Thank you, man. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, we're not finished yet, because we're gonna head up back over to the test kitchen and taste some more wonderful hot dogs. So don't go anywhere, taste this.
Hi, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Seminari. So we got a great show for you here today, right? Because everyone at one time or another has had at least tasted stuffed shells, but today I'm going to show you actually how to make them. So there's a, a simple and easy way that I've stuffed uh, a few thousand of these at one time or another, whether it be for various different gatherings, parties, or et cetera, or, or just the craziness of the restaurant business. Uh, but we're going to do a couple of things today. Um, and we're going to talk about a dairy-free ricotta cheese that we're going to uh, make, which I think is important because even dairy is starting to affect myself. Um, and I got an incredible almond ricotta recipe that you're just going to love. Now, talking about some of the things that we're going to be doing today, obviously we have our salted uh, water boiling in there. We're going to add a little bit more salt. And we'll have my stuffed shells, or I should say I have my shell pasta in here. And you probably want to put, I don't know, probably a quarter, a good quarter cup of salt in the water just to make sure that the pasta can grab some of that flavor. You know, you don't want any dull pasta. Too many times I eat pasta and it's just, uh, you know, it's just like a sticky, soggy carbohydrate mess. So you want a little flavor involved there and that requires introducing you to Mr. Salt uh, and at times Mr. Pepper. So now we're going to get started with the pasta first, like I explained, which is down and dirty. And then with this as well, we're going to make a, a meat sauce. And the meat sauce is like indigenous to this region of cooking when it comes to pasta with me. I have to have a little bit of meat in there too. But like I always say, know where your meat comes from, right? Like, okay, we'll go into, I won't mention like these big box stores and they got a deal, you know, 10 pounds of ground beef for X amount of dollars. And you're saying to yourself, man, this is a great deal. I got to go and grab it and look, I'm saving money what you are doing is destroying your health because I can tell you from being in the back end of some of these places that butcher meat I can tell you that what goes on behind closed doors is pretty scary and sick and the cheaper you pay for your beef most likely you're getting that garbage that I've seen so you want to get grass-fed beef you want to get free of antibiotic you want uh, beef that's been free range you know you want it to be wholesome and fresh you know you don't want to get your beef from some other country where the rules and regulations just don't apply to American standards. Yeah, and that happens every day. So uh, be a little conscious, pay a little extra for your meat. Uh, and if you're going to eat meat, you know, you want to consume it only a few times a week or very little. They're supposed to say 10 ounces now. 10 ounces a week is what the doctors are saying uh, is more than enough for your body to take and not develop uh, any kind of abnormal diseases that might come with that. Uh, I am a meat eater myself, but you better believe that I know where this beef is coming from. Anyway, sirloin, a little bit of short ribs. Um, maybe we'll do another show where I go into like, you know, putting the meat into a hopper and kind of grinding your own beef. I do that. Uh, I'm not going to go into that today. I just got the end product, which is right here. Uh, and this is what it looks like. I got a little bit of short ribs, a little bit of brisket, a little bit of sirloin. So that's what I like to use in my beef. I like, I like between 95% lean. You know, I don't like a lot of fat in there um, just because that's going to bleed into and I'd rather have the flavor of the olive oil uh, to use. So one thing I want to talk about before we kind of get started and a lot of stuff that I might lose you, so pay attention. Uh, you know, talking about achiote paste, you know, which is really a, a region found uh, by like the Maya ruins and, and, and Mexican uh, type of cuisine. You'll see this. It's a natto seasoning. It's the seed. Uh, it's a whole bunch of nice flavors usually put into some kind of a, a nice brick like this. There are a lot of companies that are out there that, in my opinion, the achiote is garbage, horrible, not this company. This is a pretty good product. Go out, check it out. And I tend to put a little bit of this in any kind of my meat dishes because it adds just an extra hint of flavor to it. Um, and I'm really kind of biased on this. Uh, I use it more in everyday cooking than I do in, in Latin cooking alone. But anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. And really the rule of thumb is to take this and dissolve it in a little bit of like water or lemon juice or something like that. I'm going to show you a little trick that I'm just going to put a little pasta water in there uh, in with the tomato sauce and just alakaze, alakazo, it's done. So now we're going to get started on the dish. We got an onion here. I'm going to put our pan to the flame. Regular onion, I don't really have a preference on this. You can use shallots if you want. Um, I probably wouldn't go near a red onion. Definitely wouldn't do anything with the red onion category here. Uh, definitely not. 
And what we're going to do is we're going we're to peel this onion, we're going to chop it, we're going to saute it. We want a caramelization from the onion. We want all those sweet flavors coming. And what goes good with onions, of course? Garlic, right? You can't forget about the garlic. So we're just going to finely dice this. Again, because we don't want to be in a situation where the onions are so big they become annoying in the dish. And uh, that has happened far too many times in my life. Not for me doing it, but for me consuming it. All right, now we got a little olive oil that we're going to use. Put a little bit in there, probably like a quarter cup. If you want more, you certainly can. And we're going to throw our onions in like so. And the whole purpose of this is just to kind of get this flavor going on. I've made tomato sauce ahead of time. Uh, I usually will do that like five gallons at a time I'll make it and just kind of leave it in the refrigerator. I make it a little thick on the pastier side. This way if I want to add things to it, pick it up a la minute, this is how I do it. We got one clove of garlic. We're going to smash this baby down. Take a little bit of this almonds. I don't know, I want to say maybe two cups or so, something like that. You gotta play around with it a little bit, folks. Everything's got something to do with it, the water, the humidity. So, you know, it's not an exact recipe with this. We're gonna put one cup of water in here. We'll probably put another. And we're gonna play around with this. We're gonna salt. I'm going to turn this baby on. So we took our shells, right? We strained them. Now they're ready to be stuffed. If you're going to wait too long, throw a little olive oil on them so they don't stick, okay? But never wash them with cold water. That's just a disaster. You know, you don't never want to pick up that habit. Uh, let them cool a little bit. Like I said, they stick a little bit, a little olive oil on them. Uh, we got this almond ricotta cheese hey don't have to worry about lactose intolerance no more we got the alternative is it, it does include nuts though if you have a nut allergy you know we can't win everything here we got to constantly come up with stuff but uh, maybe we'll do another show with tofu if you have a nut allergy that'll be a great great thing so what we're going to do is take our shell and look at that going to put them in going to line them up before we do that Generally, the rule of thumb is to take a little bit of sauce, let's move that over, and put a little bit down at the bottom. It doesn't matter. The sauce is actually going to sit down anyway in the bottom. A lot of people think if they don't, if they don't sauce the bottom, it's going to stick. If you're working with a good pan, this is actually an Emily Henry pan, right? And Emily Henry has been a friend of mine for a while, and they've been doing the right thing with this show. and. It's an incredible piece of product, not only because it really helps my cooking, you know, and if you, you use a good quality pan, you're not going to run into this stickness and, and, and just things working out of whack and not coming together. This pan is really good. It's got great quality to it. A great quality pan will help produce the, you know, the end product. All right, and you just basically go down the line. We're, you know, I mean, we'll stuff as many as we can, but it's, it's quick, uh, you know. All right, so we're going to continue to stuff these. And, you know, it's, look, it's a quicker process with the bag, but I'm not going to say that it's super, super easy. But hey, I mean, what else are you doing on a Sunday? Just kind of stuff them and, you know, that's what it's about. It's about getting friends and family over to help out. Uh, you know, my rules are, you're going to eat my food, you might as well help out. You know, it's not just about washing dishes. God help if somebody picks up the, uh, a damn knife or something and helps to cook, right? So get your family and friends involved. This is very spiritual cooking anyway. I don't care what ethnicity you're from or where you're from in this world. Food is the universal language. You better believe that. So we got some stuffed shells here going on. Now variations to this dish, and I'm gonna tell you that the achiote paste really adds to any kind of beef seasoning. Even if we were doing like a shepherd's pie or something like that, this, is, this has got it going on. This has got some good stuff in here. 
I mean, variations to this dish, you could definitely put a little bit of spinach in here, but dehydrated spinach. Remember what I said, folks. Don't be whipping up a, a frozen bag of spinach and expecting to put it in here. It's just gonna be a watery mess. If you're gonna use frozen spinach, what do we do? We take the, a, a cloth, a clean cloth, and we wring that baby out till it's dry. All right, look, done. Nothing left in the bag, right? I mean, you can go licking the insides of the bag if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it because you got some good food here. Now, what we're gonna do is sauce the top of this, and then we're gonna take this cheese, which definitely we gotta do another show on this. Non-dairy whole mozzarella. If you want it, check it out, tastethisfoods.com. Could be delivered right to your door. Now, we got a little bit of this incredible, incredible sauce going over the top here. Woo! This is what I'm talking about. This is amazing. And you've seen it here on Taste This TV. I mean, look, the quality of the meat is really important with this dish. Um, you know, you can get garbage beef. Let me tell you something. If, if, if we, can, we can do a whole show just on me traveling and we, whatever, we sneak into some of these slaughterhouses, you'd be sick to your stomach. Now, we come to the cheese part, right? This non-dairy fresh mozzarella that you can get at tastethisfoods.com. This is what it looks like. It looks beautiful. I love it. Now what we're gonna do is just dice that up. Cut it this way too. And actually, I thicken this with a gar gar. So let's just say you were vegan. That would be a great alternative because then this, when I make a non-dairy mozzarella, it's all vegan. With there's no animal protein or anything you'll find in there. Um, and I use a gar gar, which is a, a, a natural seaweed thickener, and it takes the place of gelatin. And if you put enough in it, and I mean enough in it, because you definitely got to put more than your regular gelatin, uh, you're gonna love it, right? So I'm gonna put the mozzarella over the top. Drizzle a little bit more olive oil on top of that baby. All right, so now that we drizzled the olive oil on here, we have the mozzarella. Now you're gonna bake it in the oven. Now at this point, we're gonna say goodbye because it's really your preference whether how long you wanna leave it in the oven or if you don't. But basically what I would do is put this in there just for a couple of minutes just to get that mozzarella melted a little bit. You know, I, I like melted mozzarella. I don't want burnt mozzarella. If I wanted burnt mozzarella, we'd do something different, right? So I want the flavor still intact here. Everything is fully cooked. As I mentioned, I go a little longer on those shells uh, just because I don't want to deal with the oven cooking it, but you got yourself a winner here. So whether you fill this with vegetables and spinach, dehydrated spinach, or you wring it out, or you can fill it with broccoli, anything can go in there. I mean, restaurants, years in the restaurants, forget about what we used to put in there to stretch it out, zucchini insides and stuff like that, you never taste the difference, but uh, you got yourself a great dish here. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube to learn more about these incredible recipes coming right to your door. Uh, remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.